sing a song. It's in the back of your songbook, if you like to look at the words. Arise, my soul, arise. Back in the Echo building, we used to sing this song all the time. If you know your Bible, it's a very scripturally rich song. And uh, we're in an age where attention span and depth and study is just kind of going out the window. I want you, for those of you who know your Bible, really think about the words. And uh, it's this song originally was called Behold the Man. And it was uh, published in the 1700s. And just kind of an amazing song. Charles Wesley was the writer of it. So let's concentrate on it and sing it out with all your heart. for Pastor Clark. He's preaching down in Delaware today, Pastor Manorese, Greenwood, Delaware. So we'll pray that God helps him. I want you to pray for Tyler Jones. Uh, Brother Tyler's been in our church a long time. He's a Sunday school teacher, and uh, he's had a stroke, and he had had a couple of other ones, and they're trying to figure out what in the world's going on. So I want you to pray for Tyler. Pray for those dealing with cancer, that God will give them healing. Pray for Joe in particular. And pray for Andy in particular, and then uh, whoever all else is dealing with health problems that you know about. Let's pray for people fighting through uh, illness, and we'll we'll pray for these. Um, Dave Mason is here; his dad has died, and we need to be praying that God would give the Masons the grace that they need, and that God would help them. And uh, I appreciate uh, Dave and his family, and been in our church a long time. So let's pray for them that God would help them. I'm. Um, Thankful for God blessing the men's breakfast yesterday, 
and we had a great time. Appreciate all of you men who came, and some of you brought guests with you. The ladies did a wonderful job, wonderful, wonderful job, and we're so grateful for their work. And uh, let's pray that people who heard the gospel yesterday would receive that gospel and into their heart, and people would put their faith in Christ, all right? So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you don't know how to pray, prayer is just when we talk to God, and we have God talk to us in our hearts. I'm going to pray standing here at this pulpit. If you want to pray along with me in your heart, that'd be a wonderful thing. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence through the power of prayer. Lord, I ask that you would hear us, and we know that you do. I pray you forgive me, forgive us of our sins. We pray for cleansing. We worship you as our God. Lord, truly, you are awesome, and there's no one like you. And Lord, we think of how you're the creator. We look at the snow, and Lord, we know it all comes from you, and it's by you all things consist, your design, your perfect design. We praise and thank you for the blessings of this week. Lord, thank you for the men's breakfast, the good time that we had. Thank you for all the help you've given to us. Thank you for food for our stomachs and clothes for our backs and the places we live. Thank you that we can come to be in church this morning. Thank you for the vehicles we rode in and for the health that we have. Thank you for our freedom. Lord, thank you for our troops here in the U.S. and around the world. I pray you would be with them, protect them. Lord, I do pray for Pastor Clark today. I pray you'd fill him with the Holy Ghost and help him as he preaches. Lord, I know he wants to be a blessing. And I pray you give them a great service there. And I pray that you would use him for your glory. We thank you for how you helped us yesterday with the breakfast. And thank you, Brother Collins, and his message. Brother Moreno's message for the Spanish. And Lord, I pray that whoever heard the gospel that wasn't saved, that that word of God will go into their hearts and show them their need for Christ. Lord, we do pray that you be with our Spanish church today, our deaf church today. I pray you be with the junior churches today. And God, I pray you be with us here in the auditorium. Lord, we want to hear from heaven. God, I don't want to just go through the motions of having church. Lord, we invite you to come and to fill this place with your spirit. Lord, help our hearts, help our minds, help our bodies. Lord, it'd be easy for us to be distracted. And Lord, I pray you'd settle us with your spirit. And I pray the word of God would be strong. Lord, I pray we'd worship you to this morning and praise you and that you'd help us. I do pray for those dealing with sickness that you give them grace. Lord, we think of Tyler right now, and I pray you give these doctors wisdom. And Lord, I pray you'd help him. And I pray you'd help those dealing with cancer and dealing with illness. Lord, I do pray you'd be with the Mason family. I pray that you give them comfort. I pray you give them grace and help and strength for this moment. Lord, we are so privileged to be able to talk with you. And Lord, all of us here as a church family, we want to hear from heaven. Please help the choir now. Help those who play instruments put an anointing on their song. And we pray this in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. The Bible says about God that he is holy, holy, holy. God's holiness is to be worshipped. He's perfectly pure. He's perfectly clean. And there's no one like our God. Yeah. 
getting a blessing up here. Listen to these instruments play. You know, the Bible says God inhabits praise. You start praising God, God starts moving in. And, uh, you know, our theme is God is love, which is wonderful. God is holy, and it says it three times. Holy, holy, holy. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It's so awesome. Let's stand. Brother Mike's going to lead us to another song. In Christ alone. Let's stand together. We'll sing it out. We have salvation because of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fiercest doubt and storm. What heights of love. here today. We're especially glad that you've come and joined with us today. And we'd like to give you what we call a response card, ask you to fill that out. And then as you leave, there'll be ushers standing at the back doors. You can hand it to one of those ushers. And uh, we're not going to make anybody do this, but if you don't mind, you get a free pen. Come on. And uh, that's a good deal. But anyway, uh, if you're here today for the first time or here just once in a while, would you raise your hand just high enough where the fellas can find you and they'll get you one of these cards very, very quickly. And uh, we'll get you on, and thanks for being here. Not sure how you heard about us, but we're glad that you're here. And again, please make yourself at home. We've got a big church building, but we try to keep a small church feel, try to meet up with everybody. We're going to have a prayer for our offering. Had a good offering. In fact, had a great offering last Sunday, and appreciate people who uh, give here to our church. If you're not from here, we're an independent Bible-believing Baptist church, and what that means is we don't take any money from the state. We don't take any, even though we'd be eligible for that, we don't uh, want the control that comes with that. So we don't, and we believe God takes care of us. I didn't plan to say all that, but it kind of felt good just saying it. Uh, we don't take any money from the government at any level. Uh, so, And we don't have a denomination that supports us. 
So everything you see that's here and everything that goes on here is because of the people here who give and they give us unto the Lord and God takes care of his church. So just a little info uh, in case you happen to be a guest or new to the church. We trust God and uh, we all obey the Lord in our tithes and offerings and God blesses that. So you can give online, you can give it to an usher as you leave. Some folks like to bring it by the church during the week or mail it in, that's fine too. Uh, you give and be faithful to the Lord. Father, thank you for the opportunity to give. And Lord, it's part of our worship, how we show our love for you. And I pray that you would meet the needs of this church with all of our ministry operations going on here seven days a week. I pray that you would take care of it and finance it. I pray you'd bless our people who give and bless them for their giving as they're obedient to your word. And I pray, dear Lord God, for anyone that's out of work or someone needs a different job, that you give them the job that they're praying for and that you would take care of them. And we pray this in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen.
Amen. What a great truth. Thank you, John and Ashley. I appreciate that. We ought to all be surrendered, saying, Lord, here I am. And uh, whatever you want me to do, that's what I want to do. Let's stand. We're going to sing, Oh God, our help in ages past, our help today, our hope for years to come. 384 in your songbook, 384. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to singing this morning, and you may be seated. It's good to be in church. Thank the Lord for that. How many of you have ever faced a trial, a burden, and you knew you needed God to get you through it, get you past it? You've been there before? And how many of you can say, God did take me through that situation, and thank the Lord for that? This is a song that kind of talks about the very same thing. You know, the children of Israel came up to the Red Sea. And they looked at the sea being in front of them, and they looked at the army behind them, and they said, God, we need you. And God parted that sea for them. The three Hebrew boys facing a fiery furnace. And uh, what are we going to do? And God showed up there. And I uh, thank the Lord for that. It says they didn't even smell like smoke after being there. In that furnace, you know, the only thing that burned up was the things that had them bound. Not their hats. I thought that was funny. They put their hats on them, their socks on them. The only thing that burned up is what had them bound, and they were there with Jesus in the, in the middle of that fire. And thank God we can look back through life, and maybe we're facing a trial today. But we gain courage and faith because of the trials that God has delivered us through yesterday. And I know God will get you through. Have you ever stared down a mountain too tall to climb? No way to get over, no matter how hard you try. But somehow the Lord got you to the other side. Can I get a witness? Have you stood on the banks of a Red Sea wrestling down? Cause it's too far to swim and too wide to get around. But the good Lord brought you through walking on dry ground. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get a hand raised high? Can I get a witness? Testify. If you cried out for a miracle and you've seen him do the impossible, can I get a witness? Are you standing in a fire and the flames won't let you go? But you're still holding on to a single thread of hope. 
that the Lord can deliver and you won't even smell like smoke. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get a hand raised high? Can I get a witness? Anybody want to testify? If you've cried out for a miracle and you've seen him do the impossible, can I get a Thank you, family. Please turn to the Word of God to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 in your Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, there's one there in the songbook rack. If you're on the front row, it's underneath of you there. If you'd like to grab it, you can. And you'd be on page 1008, Ephesians chapter 1 in the Bible. We've had a good week. We praise the Lord for it. I want to thank Again, the ladies for the great job they did in the breakfast preparation and uh, you men that attended and many of you brought guests with you and we thank the Lord for that. I appreciate those who prayed for me. I was preaching out at San Diego, Lighthouse Baptist Church. Pastor Doug Fisher, we need to pray for Brother Fisher's health that God would help him and he's had strokes and seizures and had heart surgery and it's been very, very difficult. So I appreciate those of you that prayed. We were at their leadership conference, and there were other preachers, and I had a good time being around them. Pastor Tony Shirley was there, Brother John Wilkerson. Some of you know Brother Wilkerson, Brother Jason Murphy, and some others, Brother Ezekiel Salazar. So we had a good time being together, and thank God for the fellowship, and thank you for praying. And we just want to be a praying church. Thursday night, we did our new schedule and really enjoyed that, had a good time. Uh, our teenagers, um, what has happened is we brought our teens now into here on Sunday morning. So we're not doing our normally scheduled teen church. We're doing a teen church in the afternoon for afternoon church at 2. But that's why we are now having our uh, Solid Rock teens service on Thursday night. And then we also had our junior choir and had missionary stories for the junior age kids. And we'll have a lesson for them moving forward. And then our Spanish had their service. Our deaf were in with us on Thursday. At some point here, they'll be doing their own class. And then we all came in together to pray and had a really good time in the auditorium. If you don't normally attend on Thursday night, I encourage you to come. It was really a great time and a great crowd. And uh, looking forward as we continue to move forward with that on Thursday evening. We're in Ephesians chapter 1. I don't know all of what you'll do with your time this week. You'll all get, if God lets you live, 168 hours. And I don't know where all that will go, but I will say this, Sunday being the first day of the week, there's nothing better that you can do with your time than to spend time in God's Word. And that's what we do when we come to church, and I appreciate you making it. This is the kind of snow I like where it just comes down, sticks on the grass, and doesn't stick on the driveways. That's nice. And that's, if it snowed like that every day, it wouldn't bother me, right? It looks pretty and doesn't cause a mess. And everybody gets here, so thank God for that. Let's pray one more time, and then we're going to look in the Bible. Father, I pray for people here who maybe have never read the Bible or don't know much about it. I pray that it would be clear, and Lord, that you'd grip up on every heart here. I pray for people that maybe have learned the Bible for many, many years. I pray you'd give them something and stir them, and I pray that you would help me 
I pray you would hide me behind the cross, and I pray that Jesus Christ would have the preeminence. Lord, I pray you forgive me of all my pride and uncleanness and sin, and Lord, I pray I could be a vessel that you would work through and speak through today. Please, Lord, for your people's sake, I pray you bless your word, and we pray this in Jesus' precious and holy and wonderful name, amen. The book of Ephesians, were, it was written to the Ephesians, the church at Ephesus, and God gave these words to the Apostle Paul as a letter to give to them. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, notice it says, by the will of God. Pastor had been talking about the apostles. It was by the will of God. And notice who it was written to, to the saints. Now, depending on what type of church you've been raised in, you might think a saint who's somebody who has died and then people pray to a saint, and after they're dead, they do miracles. Um, we don't pray to saints or anybody like that. We are saints. And you say, I heard that song once, when the saints go marching in. That's us. And not when they, by the way, it's not when the saints come dragging in a church. Hallelujah, right? We march. And saints are people who have trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Uh, the saints, you know, sometimes people think that's just something the mummers play on January 1st. No, it's saints, people who have trusted Christ, which are at Ephesus. And to the faithful, and I want you to notice this statement here, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. You need to understand what that means, and I'm going to take a moment to describe it. To be in Christ Jesus means this. It means you've been saved. Amen. Now, I'm going to quote your scripture, Romans 10, 13. For whosoever, that means anybody, you can put your name right there on the line. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So what do I need to be saved from? We need to be saved from sin and we need to be saved from hell. Sin is what we've done that's wrong. Hell is God's punishment for our sin. I know I don't want to go to hell. I don't think anybody in their right mind wants to go to hell if they've read what the Bible says about it. Sometimes people have this idea, yeah, I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to party with my friends. Hey, guess what? No parties in hell. In hell, the Bible describes it as a lake of fire. Hell is a place of suffering. Hell is a place of heartache. You don't want to go to hell. Most importantly, God doesn't want you to go to hell. And that's why he gave Jesus to die on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus, that whosoever, that's you, believeth in him, believeth in Christ, should not perish but have everlasting life. You don't have to go to hell. Instead, you can go to heaven. And it's by receiving in your heart what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, and that's called being saved. Jesus was talking to a man named Nicodemus, a very religious man, and Jesus met with him by night. I don't know if Nicodemus was embarrassed to meet by day, or maybe both Jesus and Nicodemus just had a busy day and they chose to meet at night. I'm not sure the reason why, but at nighttime they were speaking with each other, and Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, and he said these words. He said, ye must be born again. And Nicodemus said, what do you mean? Do I go into my mother's womb and be born again, thinking physically, and Jesus wasn't talking about we need to have a second time when we're born physically from our mother's womb. He was talking about there needs to be a time when you are born into God's family, speaking about spiritually. So I was born January 19th, 1968, Cooper Hospital, Camden, New Jersey, Charles Clark III. I'm 54 years old, old head, right? And so I was born into the Clark family. One time I had a physical birth. When I was eight years old, I was just a boy, but my dad took the Bible and showed me from the Bible how I was a sinner and I deserved hell. I knew I didn't want to go there. I believed in Jesus Christ and what he said about himself, that he was God's son, and I prayed and I asked God for the forgiveness of my sins and I received Christ into my heart. The Bible says that when you do that, you're then one of God's children. You're born again. So I have my physical birth in January of 1968, but I had my spiritual birth in February of 1976. So that's called being born again. That's just another term for the same idea of being saved. So in Ephesians 1 and verse 1, 
it talks there about this idea of being in Christ. Do you see it? And to the faithful, and here's who they are, in Christ Jesus. So this is talking about people who have been saved, people who have been born again. The Bible term is they are in Christ. Everybody help me. What's the Bible term for somebody who's saved? They are in Christ. That was good. One more time. They are what? In Christ. Now, notice verse 2. Grace be to you. This is Paul's greeting. And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is Paul and he's worshiping God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where is that? In heavenly places, heavenly things. And then notice, in Christ. So, saved people are blessed people. It's a blessing to know God. And we're blessed, notice, with spiritual blessings. Now, God can put that in our life in a lot of different ways, but especially the idea of the spiritual blessing, the heavenly blessing of being in Christ. And we are blessed to be in Christ. We are blessed because we are in Christ. Now, notice verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him. Chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now, this is interesting. Before the world was made, God chose that those who are in Christ would be his children. This is not God going down the row and saying, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, you're going to heaven, you're going to hell, you're going to heaven, you're going to hell. That's what the false teachings of Calvinism would teach you, that God picked some people to go to hell and God picked some people to go to heaven. Please hear me. Look at the verse again, verse 4. Notice what it says, according as he hath chosen us, who's the chosen? Chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. God chose that all of those who are in him would be the chosen. And what that means is God has children, verse 5, notice this, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children, how? By Jesus Christ to who? To himself. So the idea is this. We are adopted. God has adopted us. All of those who are in Christ are God's adopted children. All of us who are in Christ are the people who are God's chosen. All of us who are in Christ... God predestinated, God chose before the world was even made that he was going to have spiritual children, that he was going to have the family of God, and it's all of those who are in Christ. Now, go back to what I said at the very beginning. The key to that and understanding is that to be in Christ, you put your faith and trust in Christ. To be in Christ, you have that moment when you are born again. So listen to this. Anybody who wants to be can be saved. Anybody who wants to be can be born again. And when you are saved and when you are born again, you are part of the family of God. I'm glad God decided he wanted to have family. I'm glad that I'm part of the family of God. Notice verse 5 again having predestinated us under the adoption of children, here's how we become God's children. By Jesus Christ. And it's to himself. We're the children of God. Notice this verse. According to the good pleasure of his will. Why did God do this? Because he wanted to. Why did God do this? Because it gave him pleasure. He decided, listen, I want to have my children. I want to have this family of God, I'm going to have ultimately what would become the church, and I'm glad God made this decision. Now notice verse 6. God is adopting us, God adopted us because of his grace. Notice verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his 
grace. So one of the reasons why God chose to save us and God chose to adopt us is so that we would praise him for the glory of his grace. Grace is when we get what we don't deserve. And salvation is something that you and I don't deserve. But because God chose that he would allow people to trust Christ and be saved, please hear me, it ought to be to the praise of the glory of his grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, watch, but now I'm found. Hey, I was blind, but now I see. And that ought to result in some praise for the glory of his grace. Brother Mike sang there, and the family sang, can I get a witness? Can I get a hand held high? Well, let me go on record. Some of y'all ought to just go ahead and raise your hand to the fact that it is the great grace of God that saved your soul, that saved my soul. If my heart stops and I fall out on this preaching box, you don't have to cry for me because absent from the body is present with the Lord. I'm going to heaven for all of eternity, and it's not because I deserve it. It's because of God's grace, and it's because he chose to save my soul. Thank God and bless his holy name. So here's what that means. Notice verse 6. Wherein he hath made us, notice, accept it, accept it in the beloved. Now, beloved, think of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. Here's Jesus getting baptized. And the voice came from heaven that said, this is my, if you know it, help me, beloved son. You remember Matthew 17 on the Mount of Transfiguration? The voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So check this out. We are accepted in the beloved. Accept it. I don't like rejection. Most of us don't, right? This week I was in San Diego and I was 4.30 in the morning and I'm taking the rental car back. Hallelujah. And you got to take it back full. If not, they'll charge you whatever, $25 a gallon or something crazy. And I'm in California, San Diego, warm weather year round, lots of homeless people, homeless people everywhere. And uh, I'm there at the pump, and I had some guy start walking up again, 4.30 in the morning, and I know he's going to give me whatever story about whatever. And I'm like, nah, man, nah. And he's like, well, 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 you know, like he wasn't happy. I didn't even let him tell a story. And I'm there pumping the gas, and I look inside, and I had some cash. I'd gotten cash where I could give some coffee guy a tip and give him a track. And anyway, long story short, I had the cash there, and I'm getting ready to pull away. And, and I'm like, so I, I go to pull out, and by then he's with one of his buddies. And I, I, I put the five bucks, and I, I open the door quick. I put the five bucks there, put the gospel track. I say, here, take that. And I go, and I pull out, and I'm stopped at the red light as soon as I pull out. And I see he looked at it, and he put the five dollars in his pocket, and he threw the track on the ground. I didn't cry, but it hurt my heart. Now here's why, really. It's him rejecting an opportunity to read something about Jesus, right? Nobody likes when that happens. Everybody likes to be accepted, not rejected. Well, let me say this. If you're saved, if you're born again, if you're in Christ, we are accepted by God, but not because of us. It's because of Jesus. We are accepted. Remember that idea of in Christ? We are accepted in the who? Beloved, right? And the beloved is Jesus, I can come before God as a child of God because when God looks at me, he doesn't see it as Charles Clark III and all of his goodness and all of his greatness. If it was up to Charles Clark III, I'd be in hell for all of eternity. But thank God I got saved, I got born again, and when God sees me, he sees me in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and I get a green light from God every time I approach the throne of God through prayer and in my heart. Watch this. I can go in. I can go in. I have direct access to God himself because I am accepted in the beloved, in God himself, in Christ. Now notice verse 7. I like this. In whom? Well, who are we talking about? The beloved, right? In Christ, 
in whom we have, oh, I like this word, redemption. Redemption. You say, what does that word mean? It's the idea of we have been redeemed, we have been purchased, we belong to God, in whom, in Christ, we have redemption. Notice how, through his blood. Oh, church family, please hear me. 2,000 years ago, there really was a man named Jesus Christ who really did die on Calvary's cross. And we sang about it in that first song, Five Bleeding Wounds He Bare. You say, what was that? Well, they had a nail in his foot, a nail in his foot, nails in his hands, a sword in his side, five bleeding wounds. You say, what is that? Christ's blood flowed from his body. Why was that necessary? Because you can't get to heaven with American Express or Visa or MasterCard or baptism waters. Are you listening? Or putting money in the plate or even showing up for church or being a good guy or a good lady and doing all of your good works. God does not accept any of those things for the forgiveness of sins. But he accepts one thing. We have redemption. We have been purchased. We have been bought. We belong to God, and we've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. I have redemption through his blood. He purchased me with his own blood. I'm not going to hell because of his own blood. I'm talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords died on Calvary's cross for me, and he died on Calvary's cross for you, and we who are saved, we are in Christ, we are accepted, we are adopted, we're not going to hell, I've been redeemed. Praise him for the riches of his grace. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It's good to be saved. Jesus is rich in his grace. Notice this, the forgiveness of sins. He doesn't see me and all of my sin. He sees me as forgiven. And notice how it's according to the riches of his grace. If I say somebody's rich, you think money. And you think, well, if they're rich, that means they have a lot of it. Let me tell you something that's better than the riches of money. It's the riches of grace. God is rich in grace. That means he's got a whole lot of it. You say, how much does he have? Enough to save you and enough to save me and enough to save anybody in this church that's ever been saved. Are you listening? And anybody that wants to be saved in the world today and anybody that's ever lived that wants to be saved, he can save them according to the riches of his grace. The goodness of God that we do not deserve. So God is awesome. And God should be worshipped for this reason. Now listen, we've been saved and born again so that we can appreciate the Lord, so that we can bless the Lord, so that we can praise the Lord, and because he takes pleasure in us as his children. But let me give you something else here from this portion of scripture that I'd like you to notice. Another primary reason of why God has saved us. Please go back to verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him, all who are saved, before the foundation of the world, God had already made this decision that Christ would die for us. And here's a reason that is often overlooked that I want you to notice. Here's the reason why. That we should be, what's that next word, church? Holy. That we should be holy. God has saved us that we should be holy. That word holy means to be pure. That word holy means to be clean. That word holy means to be separated from what is dirty. And God saved us that we should be holy. 
Please notice, God did not save us because we were holy. As it is written, Romans 3.10, there's none righteous. No, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You don't get saved because you're holy. But you get saved that we should be holy. Holy is he. That's what the choir sang. I didn't know they were singing that. Gave me a confirmation that the Holy Spirit was in on the message. Holy is he. Our God is holy, holy, holy. My son-in-law, Mike, is here in the front row. And he has a son, little Michael, my grandson. As a dad, it's just natural, he wants his son to be like him. Now, we don't want a son, we don't want, you know, a son to follow all the imperfections in us, right? In our children, we don't want them to follow all the imperfections. But a goal would be, as a dad, to be a role model. And you want a son to become like the dad. If it's the right type dad. Well, here's God. Think with me. He's holy, holy, holy. And you're his son. You're his daughter. Now, isn't it logical that God wants you to be like him? Let me say this. Not only is it logical, it's proper. That we should be holy. That's God's will. That's God's plan. Now, here's one thing that's really awesome. Positionally, that means the way I'm seen by God, when we get saved, positionally, we are holy because of the blood of Christ. Notice chapter 2. Pick up verse 4, chapter 2. But God, who is rich in mercy. Now, we already looked about how he's rich in grace in verse 7 of chapter 1. But notice there in 2, 4, he's rich in mercy. For his great love, notice, wherewith he loved us. And that's our theme for the year, God is love. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together, made us alive, right? Born spiritually, born again, together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Now notice this, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. And here's how. Here it is again, in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not in heaven in the sense I've not yet died and gone there and there in a sense of physically my person. I'm still here on earth. But positionally, watch, because of my person being in Christ, I'm viewed by God. I have, I could say it this way, I have a place in heaven because of Jesus Christ. And because I'm in Christ. And I can do that and I am in that status because I've been saved and positionally I am seen as clean. Are you tracking? We're going somewhere. We're accepted in Christ. We're seated in, with Christ. And we're clean because of Christ. We have, here's the term, the imputed righteousness of Christ. That means it's something we don't deserve but God's righteousness is put on us when we get saved through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your marker here in Ephesians. And I don't want to lose a bunch of folks, but go to Romans chapter 3, please. Romans chapter 3. I think it's important that you see this. I already made mention we're not living holy. We're not holy because of our own works. We're holy positionally because of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3 and verse 22, please notice. Even the righteousness of God, that's what we have, which is by, notice, faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. So when you believe the righteousness of Jesus Christ, it's unto you and it's upon you because you're believing in Christ you're seen as righteous. Notice chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Much more than being now justified. Some have said that we're justified just as if I'd never sinned. I'm seen as clean, justified 
It means to be declared righteous. I'm justified, notice, by his blood. For that reason, we shall be saved from wrath through him. I'm not going to hell because of Jesus Christ. Look at one more, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For those of you who know how to turn and find it, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thanks for turning. And we're going to look at verse 21, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. The Bible says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Talking about Jesus, he knew no sin, but he was made sin. Why? That we might be made the righteousness of God. And then those last, last two words there, think about it again, in him. Y'all keep tracking that theme, right? Everybody getting that? In Christ, in him. None of the righteousness is in me. None of the righteousness is in you. There's nothing we can do, do to produce something, to work something up, that God looks down and said, yep, you go into heaven because of what you did. Absolutely not. It is only in Christ. It is only in him that we find acceptance, that we find adoption, that we find redemption, that we're seen as righteous. So we are righteous because of Jesus Christ. Go back to Ephesians 1. I hope you didn't leave your marker. Tying right together with this ability to be seen as holy, notice verse 4 again, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, and then what's those next three words, help me, and without blame. Do you see that? And without blame. Now, you ever get blamed for something you didn't do? That's no fun. But a lot of times when we are taking the blame, it's because we've done something wrong. Here, the Bible says we are saved, that we should be holy and without blame. It's the idea we'd be unblemished, unblemished. If you remember, just a couple of pages over, Ephesians 5. What does the Bible say about Christ's church? The church is all of us who are saved. Notice what it said in verse 25, Christ loved the church. 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Notice 27. Ephesians 5, 27, that he might present it to himself, what type of a church? A glorious church, right? Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, help me church, out loud, ready? But that it should be holy and what? Without blemish. Now, if you remember chapter 1 and verse 4, the Bible said here in verse uh, 4, holy and without blame. So it's the same idea, without blame, without blemish. A bride comes in, she's got her wedding gown. They walk down this aisle, and they come here to meet the groom. They are very particular about keeping that wedding gown spotless, right? Young ladies getting married don't typically put their wedding dress on, and they need some grape jelly and some chocolate milk and some other things like that. They're very, very careful. Nobody's wanting to walk down the middle aisle to meet the groom, and you got a whole thing of chocolate milk you spilled on the front of your dress. You're particular. Hey, it's for a special occasion. Why? I'm going to meet my groom. Hallelujah. Hey, we're going to meet the bride. We are the bride of Christ. We're going to meet the groom, Jesus Christ. And we are seen as clean, without blemish, without spot, because of Christ. Notice Ephesians 1, 4 again, that we should be holy and without blame before him. Remember how we're seated in heavenly places before him in love. God did this. Our theme is God is love. Everything I'm preaching about right now, in the sense of us being adopted, us being accepted, us being redeemed, us being saved, us being born again, you know what's one reason why we are? It's because God loves us. God loves us, and it doesn't get any bigger than that. So we have a positional holiness that occurs because of Christ. Now, I want you to notice, I want you to think. And here's where we're just going to bring it right down to where we live. We're saved, born again, redeemed, adopted, that we should be holy. That's what we should be, holy. It's our opportunity in Christ to positionally be seen as holy and without blemish, without blame. But in a 
practical sense, we were saved that we should be holy, but in a practical sense, please hear me, church, we should be holy. We should be holy. There's much emphasis in the modern church placed on the grace of God, and I'm all for it. There, there's much emphasis in the modern church about, boy, it's good to be saved, and boy, we're under grace, and thank God for grace and the riches of grace, and much of modern Christian music is about the grace of God and about the mercy of God and the love of God. And man, you don't get, I mean, how can you get over that? I mean, it's great, the grace and mercy and love of God. Time out. Time out. We're not under grace as a license to sin. And because positionally I'm seen as clean, I'm good. Me and God, we're good. Let me ask you a question. How are we doing with this holy living stuff? How are we doing with this we should be holy day to day? Holy, what do you mean, Brother Charlie? Clean. Holy, what do you mean? Pure. Holy, what, what, what do you mean? Separated from ungodliness. Does God really want us to be that way? Keep your mark of Ephesians 1, go to 1 Peter 1. Very familiar scriptures. 1 Peter chapter 1, pick up verse 14, please. Thanks for turning. Y'all are doing great. Tell the person next to you, say, you're doing a great job. Tell them, there you go, you're doing a great job. Stay with me. I'm glad for the Bible. Come on now. People watch a super, super Bowl for seven hours, and we're in Bible for 40 minutes. We can handle, right? Where we're at. 1 Peter 1, 14. Now, we were adopted. Everybody help me. If you're saved, you were what? Adopted. So somebody that's adopted, we'd say they're our children, right? 1 Peter 1, 14. What type of children should we be? Well, look at it. As not just children, but as what type of children? Obedient children. How many of you want your children to obey you? Would you say amen right there? Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. That means this. You don't live the way that you live when you were unsaved. That's the former lust in your ignorance. When you didn't know all of what the Bible said... That's the way you used to live. But, verse 15, as he which hath called you is holy, so, help me church, three words and loudly, ready? Be ye holy, notice, not in some, but in all manner of conversation. Bible word conversation in this context, it's your way of life, the way that you behave. In all manner of conversation, everything that you're doing, God says, be ye holy. Why? Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, God is holy, and it is God's will for our lives. It's God's calling on our lives that because, watch church, we have a positional holiness. We've been adopted. We've been accepted. We've been redeemed. We've been saved. We've been born again. And thank God, he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb, and I am going to go to heaven because I'm justified, and I'm justified by the blood of Christ. But that does not exempt me while on earth from living differently than the rest of the world. I cannot live differently in my own strength. But I can do all things through who? Christ, which what? Strengtheneth me. So the command is, be ye holy. Did you notice it wasn't a suggestion? Modern day Christianity is kind of like this Bible light. Yeah, you know, God, well, you know, we all mess up sometimes. No, 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 no. Watch this. God's very, very particular. God's very, very particular about the way his children are supposed to behave. Have you ever watched a child that's pretty much out of control? Now don't point at anybody right now. As compared to children that know how to act. You ever watch a kid told by their mother, hey honey, will you sit down? And they just act like mom never even said it. 
And then you'll see some other mother, and she'll say, hey, honey, sit down, and that child sits down. One is obedient, one is disobedient. I want to ask you a question. Are you obedient to God's command of be holy? Are, are you obeying what God says in his word? Well, but Tyler, how far do you take something like this? Well, he said, be holy, for I am holy. You say, yeah, but God's perfect. Ding, 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 ding. You're getting closer. You're getting warmer. You say, what's the point? God's standard is holiness, and God wants you in the power of God's spirit with the help of the power of God's word after you have received your salvation, your justification, your position in Christ, he wants you day to day as a testimony of a changed life that Jesus gave you when he saved you. You're to be different and you're one of God's children. So we should be holy. What's in your life right now that is unholy? Now, most times we think external, right? Something that we can see. And that's part of it. Externals matter. We're ambassadors for Christ. Sometimes it's something we can see on the outside that's unholy. And those things are wrong. Sometimes... It's something on the inside, in our hearts, what we're feeling that's wrong, in our minds, things that we're thinking that are wrong. See, you can fool people on the outside, but we're not fooling God. And you may be able to fool people on the outside because you look like you're following this command that we should be holy. But maybe on the inside, there's unholiness that only you and God know about. Please hear me. God does know about it. Yes. Now, day by day, sadly, all of us sin. But we ought to be trying with the help of God not to sin. And we ought to be growing in grace. And we ought to be making the choice to live a holy life. You say, Brother Ty, what happens when I do wrong? Then we go to God and we say, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. If you've been born again, you don't have to be born again and again and again and again. It's only one time you were born physically, only one time to be born spiritually. But just like with my dad, if I do something wrong, I say, Dad, I'm sorry. I don't have to go out of his house and be born into his family again. I just say, I'm sorry. Why? Because in my relationship, are you listening? In my relationship, I want closeness. So positionally, I'm a son. I'm adopted. I can go right into my dad and talk to my heavenly father and praise God for that. But if I allow sin in my life, there's going to be a separation in the practical relationship that I have with God. And here's what will happen sometimes. We'll let that sin settle in. Psalm 66, 18 says, if I regard iniquity, if I let it take root, Iniquity, any sin. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Bible says the Lord will not hear me. Sin will separate you in your relationship with God. I didn't say you'd lose your salvation, but you'll interfere with your fellowship. So we are called to holiness. I won't look at the verses because of time, but 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 and Titus 2, 11 and 12 teaches us that we are called to holiness. And the grace of God teaches us to live holy. So it's not because I'm under grace and I now just do whatever I want. It's because I'm under grace that I do what God wants. Did everybody hear me on that? Because of grace, it's not that I do what I want. God forbid, Paul said. But it's now that I get to do what God wants because I have now the power of Christ in me and I know the word of God, and listen, there's no excuse for any person here who's truly saved to not live holy. No excuse. Oh, but child. No, 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 no. Listen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you're living in sin, it's because you want to. Now, we can for a season be overtaken at a fault. 
But we don't need to stay overtaken. We need to be upright for the glory of God, pursuing in a practical and progressive way a holiness, a sanctification that pleases God. And we're living in this age, again, where people today feel like we can just throw whatever garbage-style Christianity, worldly, carnal, fleshly, sinful, and think God's good with it. We'll put whatever thing from the world and throw the word Christian in front of it and think God's cool with it because we called it Christian. Hey, holiness is particular. And being biblical in your approach to your life is crucial. Now, in Ephesians chapters 4 through 6, Paul covered many practical things that I'm not going to preach, but I want you to put your eye on the Bible page I'm going to read some of these, and you make application as God shows you. In chapter 4, notice, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. So you're called to holiness. Think of a vocation, think of a job uh, of some sort, a, a calling of some sort. You, you want to be the best you can be. Here's the Spirit with all lowliness. So part of humility, I mean, part of walking holy is to walk humbly. Are you proud? Lowliness and meekness, not weakness, but meekness is a humility of spirit. Are you full of yourself? With long suffering, long suffering, it's a godly patience. Forbearing one another means you, you have a patience with people. Notice, in love. You love people. You know it's holy to love people. God is love. We said we're to be like God, God is love, we're to be holy. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That means we're trying to have one church and a bond of peace. Very, very important. Now, jump down if you would to 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the way you used to live, the old man, that's before you were saved, which is, notice, corrupt. It's corrupt. Do you know the world and living unsaved? That's corrupt. That's not holy. According to the deceitful lust. You know the devil's a deceiver and he's going to try to tell you, hey, follow whatever your flesh wants and it's okay. It's not okay with God. Deceitful lust. Notice, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you... Put on the new man. This is the holy life, which after God is created in righteousness and, you ought to mark these two words, true holiness. You're a new creature in Christ. You should be following after true holiness. Here you go. Wherefore, putting away lying. What you lie about this week? What you lie about? You know, wherever you are lying, that was unholy. God says, put that away. That's not for the Christian. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. Notice 26, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. What have you been angry about? You're not gotten over it and you're just still staying in a state of anger. Neither give place to the devil. That means don't give him a foothold in your life. Notice, let him that stole steal no more. What you steal this week? If you're a Christian, you're not supposed to steal. Everybody following? But rather let him labor. Instead of stealing, get a job. Working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. You're supposed to be able to take care of your stuff and help other people out. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. What did you say that was corrupt? That's like the old man. That's not supposed to be what we do. Here's what we're supposed to do, that which is good to the use of edifying. Who did you build up? So not only what did you say was wrong, but what did you not say that was right? You know it's not holy to not build up the brethren, and it is holy to build up the brethren? Edify? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. How do you do that? When you tolerate sin. Here we go. Ready? Let all bitterness. Are you bitter? That's unholy. And wrath and anger. What's that all about? We're not supposed to be full of wrath and anger. Who are you ticked off at? I'm going to punch them out. That's not biblical. That's not holy. Evil speaking. Clamor. Clamor is just like an outburst. I lost it. Well, you're a Christian. You're not supposed to. Evil speaking. 
that can include gossip. If I said, where'd you gossip this week? Who'd you gossip about this week? Let me ask you a question. Some of the words you said about some other person in this room, we put them up on the screen right now. Would you be embarrassed? Yeah. What's it say? Be put away from you. Be put away from you with all malice. You know what malice is? It's when you're glad about somebody's hurt. To karma. No, it, it's, it's not karma. It's you've got a bad spirit. You're not supposed to be glad about somebody else's hurt. Here you go, 32. Be kind. You know it's holy to be kind? How many of you say Jesus has been kind to you? Yeah, how about that? Tenderhearted. You tenderhearted or you hardhearted? Forgiving. Who are you not forgiving? That's unholy. Jump down, chapter 5, quickly. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. There it is again, the adopted ones, right? What are we supposed to do? Walk in love. Isn't that our theme? God is love. So we walk in love as Christ also loved us. Who are you not loving that you should? Hey, to be holy means you're going to love people. Isn't that a good one? You get to live holy, you get to love people. Home stretch, watch. Fornication. Mm, what's that? Sexual relationships outside of marriage. Any type of sexual activity, immorality, Outside of marriage, er, marriage is honorable. Bed undefiled. Fornicators, God says he'll judge that. Did you fornicate this week with your body? Did you fornicate in your mind? Jesus said, if you lust after a woman, you've already committed adultery in your heart. All uncleanness. Now, how about that? Come on, church, settle in. All uncleanness. What came across the TV? What came across the phone? Hello? What came across our minds? All uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you. Not once. As become a saint. Right? The same. Neither filthiness. Boy, the world's dirty. We're supposed to be different. Nor foolish talking. Nor jesting. Jesting, it's, it's dirty jokes. It's stuff that have a double meaning. Which are not convenient. That word convenient, your King James Bible means appropriate. It's not right for the Christian, but rather giving of thanks. Hey, we're not supposed to be telling dirty jokes. We're not supposed to be saying stuff that's got double meaning. By the way, you're not supposed to be listening to the comedians that are spewing their filthy stuff either. Amen, brother Charlie, preach it. I'm trying. But rather giving of thanks. You know, if we're giving of thanks about how good it is to be saved, we're not going to have dirty jokes coming out of our mouth at the same time. For this you know that no whoremonger, unclean person, covetous man, is an idolater. They're not part of the saved. Be not ye therefore seven partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. We're not going to go through all this, but in chapter 5 you get into some of this. Walk circumspectly, 15, carefully. Use your time right, 16. Don't be unwise, 17. Here you go. Some of you, you're going to have a heart attack, but 18, be not drunk with wine. Look, I didn't write the Bible. I'm just a mailman. Be not drunk with wine. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Hey, walk, walk, walk with holiness. Be filled with the Spirit. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. How's your music? Does it honor God? Hey, watch. A lot, of this, a, lot, a lot of this music out there today, it goes back to that filthiness. Amen, brother child. I preach it. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. And that's not of God. He gets into our relationships. Are we, are we walking holy in our relationship? Husbands, wives, to be clean. Children, chapter 6. Obey your parents. Hey, young people, if you're not obeying your parents, you're sinning against God. And that's not holy. Servants, the way we work. Masters, the way we have workers under us. Here's the point. Thank God for positional holiness. And we were saved that we should be holy. And without blame, without blemish. But in a practical sense, I, I would dare suggest all of us here, we need to really look at this idea of what God wants when he wants us to be holy. Because we should be holy. Look at your songbook. I want you to grab one out of the rack there and look at 207. Would you look at it? Holiness should be a focus. Would you say that with me? Holiness should be a focus. All right, I want you to change that word, a focus, to my focus. Everybody help me, ready? Holiness should be my focus. One more time, and think it as you say it. Holiness 
should be my focus. So, we should be holy. Let's change the we to I. And help me, what should we be? I should be holy. I should be holy. Now, in Christ, I am. And I can't be holy on my own in Clark's strength, but in Christ's strength. This is a great old hymn. And we've sung a few old hymns today. And when you look at the words to this, the idea would be that we're to take time to be holy. That's the idea of making it a focus. Let's stand. No, let's sit. I played you. Sing it with me. Angela, help us. Just bring us in. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Here's the love. Make friends of God's children. I want you all to look at the page in your hand. Brandon, take those words off if you would. I appreciate that, buddy. You're doing great what you're supposed to. But I want to look at it in the book. I want you to put your God-given eyeballs on your hymn book. Are you ready? Let's read verse 2. Read it with me. Ready? Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. You know, you can just get caught up in day-to-day. -day. Anybody ever heard of the South Jersey treadmill? The world rushes on. Spend much time, read me, read, read with me, please. Spend much time in secret. That's not secret doing wrong. It's with who? The next words together. With Jesus alone. By looking to who? Jesus, right? Who's our example? Jesus, right? Like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct his likeness shall see. I want to ask you a question. Do your friends in your conduct see Jesus' likeness? If I ask the people that know you best, who is he most like? You know what would be the perfect answer? He's most like Jesus. Whew. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever betide. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Verse 4, sing with me. Ready? Take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive be his control thus led by his spirit to fountains of love relationship with God thou soon shalt be fitted for service of the Murphy sang the song here I am Lord here I am, Lord. Let me ask you a question. When God looks down today, you men that have tools or ladies that have your favorite whatever that you use in the kitchen or wherever you use it, when y'all go start looking for certain things, something you want to use to do something, you're very particular about that. Very particular about that. Which ones you choose when it's something you're doing where you're being particular. When God looks down... Who does he see right now that's in a place of holy living where you're clean? Mike, throw me that bottle. He just took a drink out of this. Okay? If this bottle has a bug floating in it, most likely you're not just going to pick the bug out and say, oh, I'll take a swig anyway. Now, if you were desperate, you would, but most likely you're not. It wouldn't be your first choice. If you looked in and you saw some, you know, little floaters on the bottom there, 
that would probably be a bottle of water that you just said, no, man, I don't need that. I'm not that thirsty. So if we want a clean water, don't you think God wants a clean son or a clean daughter to use? See, we can say, here I am, Lord. Use me. But you're not really serious about that. I'm not really serious about that until we're purposed that we should be holy. If you're not a Christian, the one thing I would be scared to death about is that you somehow think that by climbing some ladder of doing special things, God lets you into heaven. That would be the worst mistake you could take from this message. What I tried to establish very much in the beginning, it is only by Jesus that we are saved. And by the way, it's only by Jesus after we're saved that we live like a Christian. But this idea of salvation, that's what you need. I'm going to turn over a new leaf and then I'll become a Christian. No, 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 no. You get saved, God changes you. You don't get changed, you don't change to get saved. Okay? God will do that work in your heart. So if you're not saved, please get saved today. And if you are saved, would you decide today, I should be holy. I want to take time to be holy. I want to focus on being holy. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Thank you for your attention. Who would say with heads bowed and eyes closed? No one leaving unless it's emergency, please. And that, if you may be already, but, but if not, let, let's just stay focused then. Here we have people standing at the front. And we're going to stand in just a second. And anybody who has not trusted Jesus Christ, there are men and ladies standing here at the front that can help you. If you're a man that's never trusted Christ, you could get saved. Come to one of the men here. If you're a lady that's never trusted Christ, you could come to one of the ladies. Who would say, Brother Charlie, I'm not sure, I'm not positive that I'm going to heaven. I mean, if my heart stopped right now, I don't know that. And I'm concerned about my soul. I know I don't want to go to hell. I know I need Christ. And God spoke to me in my heart today. I need Jesus Christ. Because I don't know I'm going to heaven. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I won't embarrass you. I won't make you do anything. But I'll pray for you and give you an opportunity to be saved. Is there anybody like that? You'd say, I don't know I'm going to heaven. I'm concerned about my soul. Here's my hand. Would you raise it high? Who across the room? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. Thank you. And you can put your hand down. Anybody else? I don't know. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Anybody else? Anybody else? In just a second, we're going to stand. God would give you the courage. If you're a lady, come to the lady. A man, come to the man. And you could get saved. Who'd say this? I'm a Christian. But Charlie, at some point today, whether it's the being thankful, blessing God, praising God for my salvation, or this idea of now that I've been adopted and accepted, I am deciding today, I'm starting or I'm restarting this concept, biblical command, to focus on my practical holiness with the help of God, with the help of God's word. And you say, God stirred me about that today. Would you raise your hand? How many like that? Hands all across the auditorium. Let's stand. Some have already come to pray. If you'd like to come and pray, there's still room at the altar. If you don't know, you're saved. If you don't know, you're saved. Why don't you come down here? If you're a lady, come to the ladies. A man, come to the man. Would you get it settled? Take that first step. God would help you. You say, I, I could never do it. You could, I promise. God could help you. Would you come right now? Would you get it settled? Would you get saved? If you don't know you're going to heaven, just come to one of these here. Trust the Lord. Trust Christ. If you're saved, let's live holy. We should be holy. There's still time. If you want to come to Christ, would you step out? Would you come right now? Would you put your faith in Jesus? Christians need to live carefully for the glory of God. If you're praying, there's still time you can finish. If you're standing out there and praying where you're at, thank you, or kneeling. If you need Christ, there's still time. Step out from where you are.
come to Jesus. If you're a Christian who's discouraged because you feel like I've already messed up, I'm saved, but I'm just a mess, Brother Charlie. Well, let's remember the same one that saved us is the one that can help us. I depend on the grace of God every single day because sadly, I sin every day. And I've got to get it right with God every single day, but He's patient, rich in mercy, rich in grace. Lord, we do love you, God, and thank you for your blessings to us and upon us. And Lord, we thank you for salvation. Lord, I pray that we would never view holiness as a negative topic. But Lord, it's a privilege to be holy positionally. And then, Lord, to live this life in a way that pleases you. Father, there are no positive benefits to sin to us doing wrong. And I pray that we would realize that. And Lord, be happy about being holy. And Lord, we cannot do it in our own strength. You said if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I pray you'd help us all, God, this week to be Spirit-filled. And God, that you would look upon our lives and smile. Lord, as we do our best to live holy in an unholy world, I pray if anyone here doesn't know you as Savior, they're not in Christ. God, that today they would speak to someone and accept you as Savior. We do love you, and we thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Gibby and Church. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to baptize. You may be seated. All right. Well, this is Elena, and she is 13 years old. And she got saved on February 3rd. Is that correct, Elena? That's awesome. And uh, she came in from Hamilton. And so we're really excited. Now, baptism, if you don't know this, baptism shows on the outside that Elena is not ashamed of what Jesus did for her on the inside. She's here at the surface of the water. That's like a cross. We go under the water. That's a picture. This is a picture of the death of Jesus. This is a picture of the burial of Jesus. And then she comes back up. That's a picture of the resurrection of Jesus. So it's like I wear a wedding ring. The ring doesn't make me married. It shows I'm not ashamed. Baptism does not wash away sin. Baptism is a symbol that a person has trusted Christ and they're not ashamed. It's an ordinance of the church that God gave to us. And that's why we baptize. And I thank God uh, Elena comes in on bus number four. So some of you who are for the bus ministry, uh, this is why young people that want to put their faith in Christ. Elaine, if you put your hands over your nose, we're very excited for you today. You can put both hands up there. There we go. And Elena, it's my joy today to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death and raised to walk in newness of life. It's awesome. We're going to have a prayer for you, all right? As I pray here, would you pray along with me for Elena, that God would use her for his glory. Father, I thank you so much for Elena coming in on the bus and getting saved. And Lord, wanting to get baptized. And God, I pray you bless this young lady. I pray that you would use her for your honor, for your glory. Bless her life, Lord. Help her at school. And Lord, that you help her to be a strong testimony. And we love you and praise you in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. How many of you were here to be for family uh, of Elena? Raise your hand. Family and friend. There we go. Morning. you got a whole cheering section, Elena. We're glad that they came today. Thank you for coming. God bless you all. That's awesome. Aunt Elena has a lot of fans here today, so that's great. Praise the Lord for that. Just a few announcements. Be careful as you leave today. I believe the surfaces are just wet, but uh, they may be slippery, so be careful there. RU meets on Friday evenings at 7 p.m. Brother Joel Patterson, center aisle, he's always there. Speak to him if you know someone struggling with addictions or stubborn habits. Pray for that meeting. Attend that meeting Fridays at 7 p.m. and also Sundays at 920. Our soul winning is this Saturday. Next time will be Thursday at 550, main lobby. But then also Saturdays at 10 a.m. we go out and share the gospel of Christ with this world. Starting point, if you'd like information about becoming a member of our church, solidrockinfo.org. Men's prayer, 6 p.m. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Saturday, I'm getting ready to get to that one. Now, this Saturday will be February 19th, 9.30 to 1.30. We're going to go over and help uh, a church that they're starting over there in Philadelphia, Bible Baptist Church. If you want to be a part of that, Saturday morning, 9.30 to 1.30. And then also Tuesday, this Tuesday from 12 to 4. So two opportunities. See me about that if you're interested. Men's prayer, 6 p.m. Nursery workers and moms meeting. Mark your, your calendar, March the 12th. 2 to 4 p.m. We'll keep announcing that, but uh, that's March the 12th. I'm excited about this one as we go today. March 18 and 19, Strengthen Your Family Weekend. We'll have an activity that will be a lot of fun here at the church Friday night, March 18th. Keep your calendar clear. Everyone in the church is welcome. Friday night, March 18th, we'll have a great time. Brother Peter Folger from the Cleveland Baptist Temple will be in here, and uh, he's coming in for that weekend. And then Saturday morning, uh, also, Strengthen Your Family Weekend, we'll have preaching and workshops and good times and food, and it's going to all be about the family. You say just our immediate family, yes, much of it directed there, but also the church family. So young and old, mark those dates, March 18th and 19th. And then Thursday evening this week, just like we had this past Thursday, 7 p.m. We've moved our prayer meeting from 7.30 to 7. We've got a teen service. We've got children's choirs. We've got a Bible study in here with Pastor. And then we're getting together at about 7.50 to 8.15 and having our prayer time all together with our Deaf Church, Spanish Church, all of our church family. This week was great. I loved it. 7 p.m. on Thursday. Let's stand together and uh, we'll pray one more time. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Pastor will preach tonight at 530. Hope to see you there. We're looking forward to a great service. Father, we love you. Thank you. We could be in church today. Thank you for Elena being baptized. And God, I pray that you'd bless her life. Lord, thank you for our faithful church family. I pray that you'd watch over us this afternoon. Lord, many right now will go out on buses Bring in young people and adults. I pray you give them a great afternoon service, a great service tonight at 530, the special music, the preaching. Pray that you'd bless it all. Bless our church. We love you. Please watch over us as we leave today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here.